I would like to now officially introduce Talia Hibbert and Ashley. So US Today bestselling author Talia Hibbert is a black British author who lives in a bedroom full of books. Supposedly there's a world beyond that room, but she has yet to drum up enough interest to investigate. She writes sexy, diverse romance because she believes that people of marginalized identities need honest and positive representation. Her interests include beauty, junk food, and unnecessary sarcasm. She will be interviewed by reviewer and avid reader, Ashley, creator of the YouTube channel, Bookish Realm. Ashley makes popular YouTube videos about the book world, providing in-depth book reviews, sharing suggested reads such as queer and graphic novel recommendations, and discussing topics such as plus size representation in books. We are in for a great hour. And now to you, Ashley and Talia. Well, it's an honor, like I said before, to meet you in person. I'm a huge fan. I'm still starstruck. <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to change no matter what. I think you just, you're an amazing person. So um, one thing that always strikes me about your bio is that you say that you love junk food. And <laughs> I'm going to use that as an icebreaker because I'm a huge fan of icebreakers and probably because I love team building and I'm nosy, and I love junk <laughs> food. So what are your uh, top five favorite junk foods? Well, first of all, thank you so much. That was really, really sweet of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, as for my top five favorite junk foods, I feel bad because I feel like a lot of these are only in the UK, but I'll describe That's okay. them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love pot noodles which are it's what it sounds like it's noodles in a pot um okay. and you just pour hot water in them and then you can eat them and it's amazing um so that's one i love jaffa cakes which are there's a big argument about whether they're biscuits mm. or they're cakes but they're like little round things and there's like a sponge bit and then there's orange marmalade and then oh, there's chocolate on top that sounds amazing. great <laughs> um I love Kit Kats. I believe you guys have Kit Kats. Yeah, we do have Kit Kats. Kit Kats own the world. <laughs> they do. <laughs> um, I really love these crisps, chips called mm -hmm. Sensations. They're like sweet chili crisps. They're amazing. Um, and then my final favorite junk food. I don't know if this counts because it's it's potato, which is a vegetable, so it's really good for you, but <laughs> yeah. chips, like fries, I guess you would call them. <laughs> yes, fries are definitely top five favorite foods. I don't even call it a junk food. It's it's a must. A staple. <laughs> it is a staple in my household. So <laughs> I'm I'm right there with you. Do you have do you have a particular snack that you go to whenever you're writing? Oh, I don't tend to snack when I'm writing because Ooh. like I'm in the zone. But then mm -hmm. when I write for a really long time and I finish and I'm starving, I always go and eat some biscuits, um, any biscuits, whatever we okay. have in the house. <laughs> OK, OK. I, yeah, I I try not to um, snack too much like if I'm reviewing, but I it's it's a must. I have to have junk food nearby to focus, which probably isn't a great habit, but it's there do what you've got to do. I got to survive <laughs> my survival exactly. so how long have you been writing and what made you want to write romance books in particular uh so I started writing and publishing in 2017 mm -hmm. um I kind of spent my whole life trying to write I wrote a lot of poetry but when it came to writing novels, I could never finish anything until mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to publish it. And then I suppose that was motivation. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to write romance because I knew I wanted to be a writer. I knew I wanted mm -hmm. to try and make that my career. And romance is what I've always read the most ever since okay. I discovered it. So it just seemed natural to do what I loved. Okay. Yeah. Romance. I. <laughs> How long have you been reading romance? That, that's, <laughs> that's a good um, question. I read my first romance when I was 12, so wow. I'm bad at maths, but over a decade ago, well over, over a decade. <laughs> okay, okay. I definitely appreciate romance a lot more now. I just started reading it in, in the past few years, but it's a, 
it's a great genre. So going to romance, I know there's quite a few like subgenres of romance mm -hmm. and I've seen you write both paranormal and contemporary, but is there a subgenre that you haven't explored that you would like to try out in the future? Definitely. I am a huge fan of like high fantasy romance, like okay. um, Tasha Suri writes mm -hmm. amazing South Asian inspired fantasy romance. Mm -hmm. I think her latest is called The Jasmine Throne and I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I could do that, but I feel like you need a big galaxy brain. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever you're ready to do that, we'll be ready to read it for sure. Um, <laughs> Are there any particular writers or books that you feel like have influenced your writing, specifically like romance books or romance writers? Definitely. So the first romance writer I ever came across was Julia mm -hmm. Quinn. Um, my library had all her books, so I just mm -hmm. devoured them all. And mm -hmm. she's so funny. There's so much banter in her books. Mm -hmm. And that absolutely influenced my writing. And then Later on, when I was able to buy my own books, you know, when Kindle was a thing and I could go online, mm -hmm. I discovered so many authors of color writing romance like Alicia Bai and Rebecca mm -hmm. Weatherspoon and um, just a lot of people. My mind always goes blank, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I've read so much romance and I feel like it mm -hmm. really is my writing is just a product of everything I've read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, have you watched a Netflix adaptation of the Bridgertons? I haven't. At first it was because I didn't have Netflix. And then as time went by, I was like, yeah, I'm a grown up. I can have Netflix if I want. But then I was like, I'm scared. Like, I'm afraid. <laughs> Especially if, if she's influenced you so much and then watching exactly. the adaptation, it could definitely go. I, I can see that. I definitely can see that. I've been like that with a couple of things that you, you love. And then you're like, somebody can definitely just mess this up for me. So I'd rather exactly. just I step away from it. Um, speaking of just writing, if you could tell your younger self anything about where you were and now where you are, um, what would you tell yourself? I would say that you should just go for what you really want because mm -hmm. you're going to end up there anyway. You're just going to take the long way round. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm going to tell myself that <laughs> now and, and see where I'm at 10 years, 10 years from now. Um, one thing that I've always been interested in since I've started reading romance is looking at, you know, independently published um, authors, especially independently published Black romance um, authors, very, very heavily into that. And um, looking at how things change when you get to like big publishing houses. And I know that you've, you've done both. Um, is there a major difference between the two and do you have a preference for one over the other? For me, it definitely depends on the story I have as to mm -hmm. how I prefer to publish it mm -hmm. because, well, there's maybe two major differences and the first is that when you self-publish, you're very much on your own schedule, mm -hmm. um, which has been really important to me a lot of the time. Whereas mm -hmm. traditional publishing, it's a longer timeline, but it's very rigid and it's not as flexible. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other difference is I'm kind of a, a cozy writer, I like mm -hmm. to say. I, I write things on a smaller scale naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a very small scale about like two people in a house doing nothing. <laughs> and those kind of books are like my indie books because I okay. know they're not big and hooky enough for a traditional mm -hmm. publisher. Whereas when I occasionally have a more high concept idea, mm -hmm. that in my mind is a traditional book. Okay, all right. Um, speaking of just your writing process, what does that look like for you? And how long does it take you to write a book? Because was it 2018 you were, you were putting out books? <laughs> I had bills that? to pay in 2018. <laughs> putting out books like that so um how how would you describe your writing process and has it changed since let's say 2018 my writing process has definitely changed and when I was first starting out um mm -hmm. I researched so much especially looking at the things that other indie authors had been kind enough mm -hmm. to share online and I always remember I read somewhere, someone said that like your first few stories are kind of the low hanging fruit of your mind, stories that have been there, whether you knew it or not for a long time developing. And so they seem to come easier, but once you've written those, you have to climb a bit higher 
-hmm. And I've definitely felt that the more stories I've written. Mm -hmm. Um, And also I think because the more you do something, the better you get, which is great, but then your standards get higher and it's very stressful. And so in the past I could write books very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And now I can still write books very quickly, but I do prefer to take a bit longer. Okay. So depending on the story, I would say it takes me anywhere from three to nine months to write a okay. book. Okay, that's still quick. <laughs> three to nine months, is, that's still really, really quick. Um, I know earlier we talked about like you being like super focused whenever you're writing. Is there anything in particular that helps you focus whenever you're working on a novel? Like what is your... What is the um, what is the vibe of the room whenever you're <laughs> whenever you're writing? I have to get in the zone. So now I'm very lucky. I have an office, but before mm-hmm. I was just writing in my bedroom, and I have my desk facing like a blank wall, okay. and I need water, and I need no one to talk to me, and then I'm quite lucky, I suppose, because I can hyper focus if I'm mm-hmm. lucky, and I'm feeling it. I'm like woof. Mm-hmm and then time has passed and I'm like oh my god what's happening Mm -hmm. so as long as I'm kind of peaceful and alone that's pretty much all I need yeah I wish I had that ability I'm (laughs) easy I'm easily distracted with everything that I do so I can definitely I can definitely appreciate that um with your writing do you feel like this is probably a tough question do you feel like it's more important to have strong characters mind-blowing plot twists or epic settings oh characters all the way because first of all settings i'm really bad at settings i could write stories with no setting at all i have to try (laughs) to put like walls and locations in (laughs) and then with like plot twists Mm -hmm. i don't know what it is i'm just not that kind of thinker Mm -hmm. like even when i'm writing a book I never, no, when I'm reading a book, sorry, I never see a plot twist coming because it doesn't occur to me that the plot could be anything other than what I thought it was. (laughs) It definitely makes sense. Um, Out of those three, so you just said like, definitely the settings is most most difficult. Um, But what about plot versus character development? I'm gonna be biased because I think your pacing and your character development is chef's kiss. It is beautifully done. Um, But which one out of those two do you feel like is more difficult? I feel like for me, character, I don't know if it's necessarily more difficult, but it's the thing I spend Mm -hmm. the most time and energy on because for me, character a lot of the time dictates my plot. Mm -hmm. So when I have my characters, you know, slightly off somehow, then the Mm -hmm. whole thing collapses from there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I take as much time as possible to get the characters right, everything Mm -hmm. else is so much easier. Okay. Yeah, it definitely shows. It shows. It's it's beautiful. Um, Speaking of your characters, how do you select the names? Ah, pretty (laughs) difficult. rarely very rarely I will Mm -hmm. just get a name in my head and I will be like oh that's perfect Mm -hmm. Um, but other times I get a name and I think that's great and then three days later I wake up in the dead of night and I'm like no that's wrong (laughs) and then I I do that like eight more times Mm -hmm. and then I settle on a final name I have to make sure that it doesn't sound too much like anyone else's name and it doesn't remind me of anyone and then I kind of check the meaning and the origins to make sure that it Mm -hmm. seems like it makes sense or even Mm -hmm. the sounds. Some names don't sound right for the character's personality and that bothers me a lot. (laughs) Yeah, that, wow. So there's a lot of in-depth thinking in, because I'm not a writer. So hearing you say like, even thinking about the character's personality and that name choice, like that's, that's very, very, very interesting. I would never thought in a million years, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, oh yeah, probably just have a name. Sounds good. Let's just go with it. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely more, more intricate than that. Um, kind of circling back, like how many, how many hours, I'm just going to assume hours. You could tell me like, no, actually it's not hours, but <laughs> how many hours a day do you think you spend writing? Um, it 
varies depending on my mm -hmm. health because I have a disability and some okay. days I'm like yes let's write and other days mm -hmm. I'm like I just mm -hmm. need to lie down over here um <laughs> yeah. but ideally a week mm -hmm. Well, right now, let me just say how I'm doing it right now. Right now, mm -hmm. I'm writing about three days a week. Okay. And I want to do between 3,000 and 6,000 words a day. Okay. And so I do maybe four hours a day, but I split okay. that in half usually. Okay. And you're, you write full time now, right? Yeah. Okay. That is so cool. <laughs> it's and really I cool. I just like lounge around the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> If it works, it, it definitely, it works. Um, whenever you write your books, have you, like after you complete like the first draft, have you ever gone back and made like significant or major changes to everything? Like, like you just said, like you go to sleep at night and you're like, wait, 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 wait. that's not, that's not working. Like, have you ever had that moment where you've done a first draft and you're like, no, never mind. Let's, let's yes. change all of that. Okay. And it's horrible. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine feeling like uh, I'm at the finish line and then it's like, wait, no, you're not. Let's go back. I hate it. I, I'm lucky because usually I get that feeling halfway through, which is better okay. than going the whole way through, I suppose. But mm -hmm. I'm actually just like last month I finished a book I sent it to my editor mm -hmm. and then like a couple of weeks later I emailed her like I am so sorry disregard that entire thing that was so wrong <laughs> how does your editor process that uh, she's very nice to me <laughs> she's very nice she's a patient lady <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, so after you get past the, the changes and you, you have a book that you finish and you know for a fact that this book is finished, it's ready to go through its editing process, um, is there a particular way that you celebrate? Um, so when I first started writing, I was writing really, really fast. And so I didn't celebrate anything because I was like, okay, next book. But I kind of realized that wasn't a very healthy way to mark your achievements. So now I, I try to celebrate, um, but it, it's different every time, but usually I eat something, something very nice. We are the same. <laughs> That's how I celebrate everything. Let's get something to eat. <laughs> It works every time. It works every time. It's the simplest way to celebrate. Everybody's happy. Food is, food makes me happy. Um, kind of switching gears. I am a book reviewer. So this is always a question that I like to ask. Do you read your book reviews or books or reviews that people have made of your books? Or do you stay away from them? No, <laughs> I, I used to read them um, mm -hmm. because I was running my own ship and I needed the reviews to mm -hmm. post them places to find the good ones. Mm -hmm. But obviously then I had to see the bad ones and it hurt my feelings so much, yeah. I'm yeah. so sensitive. So now I just don't look at all because mm -hmm. even good reviews, someone could leave me a glowing review and make one perfectly reasonable comment that isn't 100% positive and I'll be lying mm -hmm. in bed like, what did they mean by that? Yeah, <laughs> so I get it. I completely, I definitely get it and being on the other side of, you know, of the literary world and reviewing, I always hope that authors actually do not <laughs> read my reviews because I can only imagine like you're putting your art out into the world and you want people to love it. And it, it can definitely hurt your feelings if someone doesn't. Um, so switching over to the books that you've written, I'll let you tell everybody how many books have you written? Oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> um I don't an know. estimate an estimate like 17 I want to say okay 17 Maybe. is a great number that's my yeah. favorite number <laughs> that is perfect <laughs> um Amazing. and I know everybody is familiar with the Brown sisters but what is it's like asking you to choose your favorite child what is your favorite book that you've written outside of that trilogy <laughs> I had to ask oh no <laughs> Okay, I actually have two. Is that allowed? Okay, yeah, no, that's yeah, whatever you want, whatever you want. And I feel bad because they're quite different from the Brown Sisters. But um, okay. so the first is called The Roommate Risk, and mm -hmm. it's about um, best friends. They've been best friends for seven years, but 
he's been in love with her the whole time and then they have to move in together and she notices and things mm-hmm. don't she um and then the other one is called work for it and it's about someone this guy is dealing with depression mm-hmm. and so he decides to run off to the countryside to avoid his problems mm-hmm. and he meets a fruit farmer and they have to work together and they're enemies but then they love each other and it means to lovers best trope ever <laughs> so much tension <laughs> um going back to the brown sisters where did you get the inspiration to write this series and why did you choose to focus on sisters so the whole thing started because of mm-hmm. chloe i you know there was a big trend in romance for romantic mm-hmm. comedies mm-hmm. and i had never set out to write specifically a comedic book so I decided I wanted Mm -hmm. to do that and when I was thinking about funny topics I thought um I have chronic pain and I was like Mm -hmm. you know it's actually an underrated source of comedy like I'm sure people don't realize how funny this is so I wanted to write a book that kind of showed Mm -hmm. that humor um Mm -hmm. and then when I was coming up with Chloe's character it really it kind of occurred to me that she was definitely an older sister type So then I started thinking, well, who are her younger siblings? And once I had come up with Danny and Eve, I was like, obviously they need their own books. Yes, yes. Um, And speaking of, the titles for each book are extremely catchy. Um, (laughs) And I think they do give insight to like the overall theme of the book. How did you come up with the titles for each one of these books? Ah, well, Get a Life, Chloe Brown was one of those things that just came to me. I thought it sounded Mm -hmm. fun. And I was like, yes, that's what it's going to be. But then I realized that I kind of had to keep the convention up with the rest <laughs> yes. of the series. And that was really hard. <laughs> and take a hint, once I'd settled on that story, because mm-hmm. that book was really kind of difficult to get exactly right. But okay. once I was happy with the story, I was like, okay, take a hint. Yes. Um, but then Eve's book was really tricky and I had like one title and then marketing said that it sounded too YA and I was like uh, so then we all brainstormed different titles and mm-hmm. we ended up with something that I really loved but it was hard to get there. Yeah yeah they're great by the way very very catchy easy to remember so you did an excellent <laughs> job. Oh, um, one of my favorite things about all of your books specifically this this trilogy is um the representation of marginalized communities um for me specifically working with youth i'm always thinking of representation um so why was it important for you to focus on the specific types of representation that we get in every single one of these books i feel like um because i grew up getting almost all my books from the library and Mm -hmm. I spent most of my childhood in a small town that's very white Mm -hmm. I only had access to these books that showed one way of being and Mm -hmm. I felt really self-conscious and excluded and not just for myself but like Mm -hmm. the people that I loved and who made up my world were nowhere to be found so now when I'm writing I always like to contribute to you know turning the tide and Mm -hmm. showing the world that I live in and the people I know and the things that I feel Yeah, well, it is greatly appreciated, especially in the world of romance. So I just personally would like to say I I definitely, I definitely appreciate it. And Danny is like, Danny is me, I am Danny. So (laughs) if if that was your goal, you have accomplished your goal. And, you know, for representation, it it has helped a lot of us. Um, Here goes another difficult question, kind of like your favorite (laughs) child. (laughs) <laughs> Which brown sister do you identify with the most? <laughs> okay. Mm, I think the one I identify with the most is Chloe. Mm. Okay. Because she's very grumpy and not very good at socializing. And I relate to that. And she just wants to stay at home and mm-hmm. eat chocolate. And I relate to that too. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, the sister that you identify with the least? Um, I think... Ooh, it's tricky. Danny mm-hmm. and Eve are both kind of different from me because Eve is very, you know, go with the flow and creative. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like straight lines and that's mm-hmm. my next goal and I'm going to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Danny is just so like confident and mm-hmm. I'm not. So 
they're both very different from me, I think. Okay. Um, are any of the sisters based on people that you know in real life? No, because <laughs> I would immediately be found out and they would probably be annoyed at me. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder if authors have, like, if, if they're inspired by people in real life, how do you keep it? How do you keep people from realizing that it's them in the book? It would so. be tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> um, if you could meet them in real life, and the four of you could go out and do anything, what would it be? Ooh. <laughs> I would like, oh my God, I sound like a broken record. I would like to go out to eat. I would like specifically <laughs> to go to an all you can eat buffet <laughs> and we would have a strategy and we would do an amazing job. I miss going to buffet. So yes. I, <laughs> if you ever want to send an invite, you just let me know. Noted. Uh, <laughs> um, with the three books, was one of the books more difficult? To, well, you said that that Danny's book probably was a little bit more difficult. Can you tell us why or like what made that one more difficult than the other two? There were a couple of things. First, mm -hmm. it was kind of like second book syndrome because mm -hmm. I tried writing a romantic comedy with Chloe's book and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, that came out pretty good. And I was like, now I have to do it again, but different. That's hard. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was that I had this idea of how Danny and Zaf's story would go because I'd kind of had the idea of him specifically in my head for a while. Mm -hmm. And the idea I had didn't mesh with the vibe that I wanted overall for the series. Okay. So I was kind of like fighting myself and mm -hmm. I had to let it go and commit to one vision before I could get it right. Okay. Okay. Are we ever going to see any of these characters again? Yes. I want to know this personally. <laughs> okay. Yes, because I'm, I'm writing a spin-off series called Sky Briar, set in the town where actor Eve, actor Eve mm -hmm. Brown takes place. Um, yes. So Eve and Jacob are there like all the time because they live okay. there. And then Chloe and Danny show up sometimes as well to see Eve. <laughs> Yes, that is exciting. Um, okay, kind of shifting over again. If you could spend a day, and these, I think a lot of these are, or some of these are hypothetical questions. If you could spend a day with another popular author, who would it be and what would you be doing? Oh, this is so hard. Um, okay, I would. Can I you can pick more than one. Okay, you can okay. pick more than one. <laughs> Okay, so I would spend the day with Kennedy Ryan and Dylan Allen, and what would we do? We'd just hang out. <laughs> would you go I, out to I eat? I them both a lot. Yes, we'd go out to eat <laughs> and maybe do some karaoke. I feel like that would be hilarious. <laughs> um, this is a question that I think I'm super curious about because I know you spend a lot of time writing. Do you have any time to read as an author, how much yes. time do you have? Well, sometimes, you know, when you are so caught up with writing, mm -hmm. you read less, um, mm -hmm. but I find that that's a problem because when I read less, I'm kind of unhappy, even if I don't notice mm -hmm. I'm doing it. And so it mm -hmm. really affects like my energy and my creativity. So I read a lot and um, okay. I also, I like to review books a lot on my Goodreads because I love books. So sometimes I have books that I want to review like when they come out. Mm -hmm. And so I have my list of books I have to read right there. And yesterday I spent a whole day reading, um, I want to say it's called, no, I'm not going to butcher the title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Just, nope, I'm not going to do that. I get it. I completely get it. So we were talking earlier about um, Ace of Spades, which, which is a YA um, kind of thriller with some, not with some, with a lot of social commentary thrown into the mix. Um, are there any genres outside of romance that you enjoy? And if so, like, what are your top three? If you want to give more, give more. <laughs> so I don't want to restrict you. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, I really love, I feel like these are all romance, well, not all, but many of them are romance adjacent. Okay. Um, so I love YA, and obviously okay. YA can be YA romance or whatever mm -hmm. else. 
Um, I've really gotten into cozy mysteries, which okay. often have a romance in them. Um, but I just like the mystery part, which has surprised me. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And then I also really love fantasy and sci-fi. I kind of grew mm -hmm. up watching that sort of thing on TV because my mom okay. is huge into sci-fi. And so mm -hmm. I love to read it as well. Yeah, my dad is too. He made us watch the sci-fi channel growing up. And <laughs> I don't know what it did for me as an adult, but <laughs> it was it was there. Um, <laughs> what are some books that you've read recently that you would recommend? Oh, okay. I have my book phone here because I can never remember what I've read. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have one phone that doesn't work except for reading. And so I use it for my books. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I reread the Turner series by Courtney Milan. I love Courtney Milan. She's mm -hmm. one of my favorite historical authors. Mm -hmm. She has some contemporary romances as well that are also impeccable. Um, I read the entire Murderbot Diaries series by Martha Wells. Yes. So fun. Like, so, good. so ridiculous. Amazing. Yes. yes. Sci-fi. Yeah. Um, and what else? Hang on, I'm scrolling past all these Murderbot books. Oh, <laughs> I read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, which just recently okay. came out. And it was epic, amazing, incredible. Okay. I wish I'd written it. Everyone should read it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, speaking of, since you read so much, do you have a preference for audiobook, physical, physical books, or ebooks? I do. I love ebooks because, mm -hmm. first of all, if I bought all the books I wanted in paperbacks, I would have no space in my house. Um, and also because it's so much easier for me to hold my phone, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. holding a whole paperback is hard. Um, mm -hmm. And I wish I could do audiobooks, but my mind wonders so badly yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I hear that a lot but like I wish I could but I can't I can't focus on it which I definitely can get that um if you could give any advice to a writer what would it be what have you learned from when you first started writing to now you have to know what you want from each story and mm -hmm. don't limit yourself with either your expectations of what you should want or your ideas about your own capabilities as long as you know what you want it to be you can do whatever it takes to get the story there okay great advice um what does being a successful author look like to you do you consider yourself to be a successful author well as a matter of fact <laughs> i do yes because... yes <laughs> We will give you your flowers now. You deserve them all. <laughs> I just, growing up, I wanted to be an author. I wanted that to be my job, mm -hmm. but everyone mm -hmm. was like, that's not going to happen. Like, you're not going to get published yeah. or you'll get published, but you'll make two pounds and you'll have to live under a bridge. Mm -hmm. And so just the fact that this is my job and I'm doing fine and I can just mm -hmm. write every day for the rest of my life, that feels like the ultimate success to me. That is the ultimate flex. <laughs> it is the ultimate flex when people are like, you're never going to make it. And then you're like, and here I am. So <laughs> the ultimate flex. Um, this is more of a, like a technical question. Like what marketing strategies have worked best for you? Because I'm sure it's changed from when you first started writing and doing a lot of indie to now um, working with a major publishing house. Yeah. So when I first started, I did a lot of research and my main, the two main things that I picked up were that I needed mm. to publish as much as possible mm -hmm. um, so that I could kind of stay in people's minds and build an audience quickly and retain readers. Mm -hmm. And I needed to build my mailing list. Um, mm -hmm. And so those were my goals. So I, I said to myself, I'm going to publish a book a month and I'm going to say in the back of the book, sign up to mm -hmm. my newsletter. Mm -hmm. And those two things through every change in my career mm -hmm. have put me in such a good place. Um, and I mean, that's not to say that I would recommend people publish a book a month anymore. <laughs> that was yeah. a very horrible experience. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that's stood me in good stead is always writing the next thing rather than like sitting on my laurels. Um, okay. 
and always trying to retain the readers that I have, you know, mm -hmm. I think any marketing strategy that focuses too much on gaining new readers at the expense of existing readers is, is mm -hmm. always going to be a bad decision. Okay. Um, so this is completely random. Who designs your covers? Like, do you have a say in it or um, is it a completely different team or did it change? Like, were you doing your covers when you were independently publishing? I'm sure there's, there are other people involved now, but what does that process look like? So my very first book, I designed the cover. It was atrocious. I have no artistic <laughs> talent whatsoever. <laughs> um, and then I redesigned it and then I redesigned mm -hmm. it. And then I gave mm -hmm. in and hired someone who was very affordable. Okay. And they did my covers for a long time, but then I felt really bad about not paying so much for art, you know, cause once I could mm -hmm. afford it, I felt mm -hmm. like I really should be. So now um, Natasha Snow does my covers Okay. She's super amazing. Um, and then my my traditionally published covers, which Avon sorted out for me. Okay. I was lucky to have quite a lot of input into how those mm -hmm. ended up. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a really fun experience. So I'm happy yeah. with all my covers. That's great because I have heard, like, you know, I've heard authors say, like, I had no idea what the cover. <laughs> is going to be until the cover is done and they're like here this is this is the cover oh God, of your book so I would hate that I would hate yeah, that yeah <laughs> I, I was I was like wait what so I know that it does happen so it's great that you you got some some input in it um if you could choose a career this is your dream but if you could choose a career besides writing um regardless of whether you needed schooling or special talents or anything like that what would it be well I mm, I was going to be a lawyer I was going to be a solicitor so wow. that I suppose <laughs> <laughs> would you would you enjoy it or <laughs> no, no. But I don't think I'd enjoy anything else so <laughs> oh I, I get it um what's something that you're really good at that few people know about Ooh, I feel like my main and only talent is writing um I, I can sing Passively. You can sing. Oh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I used to do like shows and stuff. Oh wow! Like was this like when I was a kid? Know, when you were a kid? Okay, okay. I was like, like uni <laughs> or anything like that. Okay. I was in the choir, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool talent. I would have never known that. Um, if you had the opportunity to live anywhere in the world for a year while writing a book that took place in the same setting, where would it be? Ooh. Ooh. See, this is difficult for me because I love visiting locations that mm -hmm. I'm writing, but mm -hmm. I also hate being in new places. So <laughs> um, maybe Jamaica would be great, mainly because a free year in Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica is it. That is that is definitely it. Um, you told us about one current project that you have going on. Is that your main focus right now or is there anything else that you're working on that you can tell us about? I can't remember what I told you about. Oh, Sky Brian? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I can think laughs> so. Yes. Um, I'm actually working on something else that is my main focus, um, okay. which is my first YA romance. Um, <laughs> um, it's called highly suspicious and unfairly cute and it's about these two kids who were best friends and then they had like a massive falling out and ever since then they've been enemies and like academic mm -hmm. rivals and now it's their mm -hmm. last year of school and they're forced to go on a wilderness trek together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they accidentally fall in love <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great I'm, I'm excited for that my kids will love something like that so I want to make sure that I leave just enough time for us to ask questions, but um, how can readers or anyone here learn more about your books? So all of my books and uh, recommended reading order are on mm -hmm. my website, which is mm -hmm. taliahibbert.com. Um, okay. And while you're there, you can also sign up for my newsletter, which I, I like to think it's a good newsletter. I work really hard on it. So <laughs> it's got a lot of information. Great, yes. <laughs> All right, Jenny, did you want to open it up for questions? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, so if anyone would have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, I have one to kick us off with um, about the leading men in the Brown Sisters trilogy. Were there any ins inspirations for them? Yes, I feel like my boyfriend inspires the vast majority of the heroes that I write because I'm like, okay, I need to write a really great guy. And my brain's like, Sam. So <laughs> just a lack of imagination there. <laughs> <laughs> well that's good that um it's your boyfriend inspiring the leading heroes and not the villains that's always a happy yes, that would be no question. <laughs> yes. um we have a question from shauna um there have been a lot of conversations happening in the bookish community about writing representation when you're not a member of the specific community how do you feel about this are there any lines you don't cross in terms of writing rep? And is the writing process different when including it? Love your books. Thank you. Um, I feel like for me, it's important to think uh, about your own um, intentions and what you want out of writing an experience that you don't share because there's lots of reasons to write representation that you don't personally share, but you know your reasons and if your reasons are just kind of I want to see this kind of character in my book then that's fine but if you're expecting some kind of applause or if you feel some kind of exotic thrill then you need to stop and maybe think about yourself for a while you know because we all have these like ingrained just bad ideas that come from living in a world that pushes these bad ideas but the important thing is to be aware of them so that you don't keep that cycle going and push them yourself um and so when i'm writing something that isn't my own experience i feel like it's really important to me that first of all i feel like there's a difference between writing an experience that's not yours and writing like a struggle that's not yours i feel like mm -hmm. that's a line i don't cross Mm -hmm. um and then also i always want people of those communities involved um you know multiple people because people disagree on things all the time and if i don't know enough people of that community then that's another thing that makes me think hmm am i the right person to be writing this at this point thank you um we have another question from kendall um, how do you handle the added pressures from writing and holding marginalized identities and possibly impacting the book world on a larger scale? Well, a lot of the time I think of it as, especially when I'm writing my own experience, which I tend to do, I think of it as, you know, my experience doesn't have to be everyone's experience and it doesn't have to be representative of everyone because what I'm trying to do is add to the community of different perspectives mm -hmm. that are on offer um i always think of this in terms of disney princesses so if you're white you have you can be the disney princess who loves books or you can be the red-haired one or you can be this one or that one but if for example you're black you can be just one princess you have one princess <laughs> and i feel like we should all have a plethora of disney princesses that we see ourselves in to choose more precisely which one is us. And so rather than my books representing everyone, I feel like I'm just adding to the Disney princesses. It's a really good parallel. Mm -hmm. So pivoting to a very different question um, from Jimmy, is eating Captain America and AO AO3 a real thing? <laughs> okay, so that specific <laughs> thing is not real. <laughs> But <laughs> it's very much, you know, it's not unusual and it's not a rare thing that I made up. I just gave it its own title, but you can very much find fix of that spirit on AO3. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, from Janine, um, with the ever expanding world of streaming, do you ever see your stories becoming a movie or series? Gosh, I would love that. 
I love that so much, um, especially because I really love television and I want to write for television as well. So the ideal would be writing my own series for television, but then also I might not be the best person to do that. Um, so in short, hopefully we will see. <laughs> Do you have a different genre that you would want to write for television or would you want to stay in the rom-com or romance genre? I would definitely want to stay in rom-com, but I would not be averse also to anything like sci-fi or fantasy. <laughs> rom-com, sci-fi, fantasy series. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, and continuing about TV um, from Jimmy, is there a TV series that you, you like? Ooh, there's so many. Um, so I've recently finished Lovesick, which is a British romance series. And well, it's about a guy who gets chlamydia and he has to contact all his past girlfriends. So it doesn't sound romantic, but it is romantic. You just got to trust me. <laughs> um, from Cariel, uh, do your friends and family read your books? Gosh, um, so my parents don't read my books. They're not allowed. Um, my mum really wants to for some reason. She doesn't like romance, but she wants to read my books, but I've fanned her. My dad is not interested and every day I thank God for that. My cousin and my aunt, they read my books, but they're not allowed to tell me about their opinions or experiences. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then another question, are there any romance tropes that you haven't written yet that you would like to write about? So I love tropes and I feel like mm -hmm. I kind of want to write all the tropes, even the ones I don't like that much. Um, for example, Secret Baby, on the whole, I just don't like, cause I'm like, why? <laughs> but then at the same time, I'm like, but maybe? Maybe. <laughs> So a lot of tropes. <laughs> uh, and for those not familiar with the secret baby trope, would you mind explaining a little what it is? <laughs> so the secret baby trope is when someone gets pregnant and they're like, should I tell the person who impregnated me? And then for some reason they think, no, no, I shouldn't. And then, <laughs> and then later on that person comes along and is like, what the hell? <laughs> Um, I have I have another question for you. Um, how do you think that the romance community, Romance Landia, is now doing in terms of making sure that they are showcasing diverse writers and diverse stories? I feel like first of all, Romance Landia is so huge that every so often I, I stumble across areas where I'm like, where am I? What is going on here? <laughs> and they're like, oh, over here we like feet. And I'm like, oh, okay. Another discovery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's so hard to, to say who's doing what, but at the same time, I know that, especially as an indie author, I've been so lucky to have so many amazing like bloggers and even just super dedicated readers who mm -hmm. have been really committed to uplifting stories like mine and mm -hmm. that's made such a huge difference to me so I feel like from my perspective like there's a lot of progress that's been made and that's still happening. We have a comment from Jimmy and then I have a follow-up question actually about that. Um, he said, can you please write a book with just journal entries like in Eve Brown? Um, and I was curious, do you play around with format of writing like with letters or journal entries or different perspectives, third or first or second? So when I was younger, I really loved The Princess Diaries, which is like all in diary format. And now I'm kind of like, how did she do that? Because it's so difficult to write in something other than like a traditional narrative. Um, but I really like putting like uh, cyber communication, like texts or emails as part of the story, because I feel like it's a very efficient way to show two people who communicate on the same wavelength and also people who are very comfortable with each other like the conventions of cyber communication are so ingrained for us to read and understand 
So um, in the future, it might be a cool idea to write something like, um, like Way Down Deep by Charlotte Stein and another author whose name I can't remember because I'm terrible, which is a romance that takes place entirely in like texts and it's amazing. We have a question from Shauna. Uh, since you love Julia Quinn, would you want to write historical romances? I would. I would love to write historical romances, but then I'm working on it because every time I try, I'm like slavery. Like my characters are over here kissing and I'm like, how can you be kissing when there's slavery? But then logically, I'm like, people kissed when there was slavery, but then I'm still working on it. <laughs> Oh, and another one from Janine. If you had to pick an actress to play the Brown sisters, so if you had to pick actresses to play them, who would you choose? I'm so bad at this because I don't know many actresses. Um, and I'm really bad at names. Um, and I actually have people in my head, but I don't know their names. So let's see if this works. So if anyone's seen Loki, there is, well, there are two British actresses in there, but the one who plays, I think her name is C-15. She's like a time police person. Her first name is Wunmi, I want to say. She is really cool and I love her and I would like her to be in the show that isn't happening. <laughs> and then also um, there's a show called Chewing Gum. I don't know if it's in the US, yeah. Um, and the little sister character in Chewing Gum, I want to say her name is Susie Wakoma in real life, not in Chewing Gum. I would also love her. <laughs> you did a good job with describing the, the, the names. I'm the same. It's like that person that was in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, were there any other questions for Talia or, or Ashley from Bookish Realm? I think one, um, there was one other question oh. where uh, they said the playlist you include are Chef's Kiss. Who is on your list to see in concert after the panoramic panini? <laughs> 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 okay, um, I recently discovered my, my younger sister's love Olivia Rodrigo and they were like she's so great and I was like hmm sounds like children's music but then I listened and I was like she is so great yeah, so she. I would love for all of us to go and see her um and also I have seen Beyonce a couple of times but after the difficulty of the panoramic I deserve to see her again mm -hmm. um and actually, I would like to go to a festival to just see like tons of people and maybe people I don't know about and like the outside. That would be amazing. <laughs> we need Beyonce to drop another album. And just yes. Patiently, Please. patiently <laughs> waiting. But my patience is like <laughs> trying so hard. <laughs> we, we deserve another album. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Well, if there aren't any other questions, thank you all so much for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure and I can't believe that's already been an hour. This mm -hmm. went by so fast. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, and we're also so excited to know that we get to uh, see the Brown sisters again. What a, truly what a treat mm -hmm. it is. They're such great characters. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Following up, um, we do have a program coming up um, in August um, for more authors. We're going to be doing a domestic thriller night with Megan Miranda and Shari LaPena. Um, she'll be interviewed by Mary Kavika. So if you would like to join us for more author fun, um, I just put the link to register for that in the chat. Um, and then we're also doing summer reading. So if you are um, reading this summer, which it sounds like we all are, um, you can join and read along with us and log your books there. That's also in the, the chat. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you have wonderful Saturdays and may you all have uh, wonderful books that are waiting for you at your bedside table. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.